In this video, we'll be talking about one of the single most important concepts in multiple sclerosis, the functional reserve. Stick around to the end of the video and I'll teach you how to preserve the reserve. Now don't turn away because all of that starts right now. Functional reserve can be defined as your nervous system's ability to withstand an insult. Now, I don't mean an insult like you're ugly. I mean an insult like you missed a night of sleep, or you have a febrile illness, or you have a significant psychosocial stressor. Now, all human beings experience fluctuations in energy levels and levels of functioning based on stressors like that. When I was 18, I could skip a night of sleep and I didn't really care. Now, in my late 40s as I make this video, saying that to you is exhausting because my functional reserve isn't what it used to be when I was a younger man. Now, in the setting of MS, it's much more pronounced. And someone impacted by MS will notice that when they miss a night of sleep, they're not just tired, but old neurological symptoms can come back out to revisit them. Let's take an example of someone who suffered an optic neuritis several years back, and the nerve that runs their eye was attacked by their MS, and it caused damage of the wire, and they weren't able to see, and they had pain with eye movement, and then after some time and steroids, their vision returned. And functionally, they could see again, but if you look at the MRI, you can see that the optic nerve was damaged. And if you talk to that person, and you talk about what happens when they miss a night of sleep, not only are they really tired the way I am, but they also have trouble with that eye. The reason is that the optic nerve didn't fully recover. It's still damaged. And when you heat up the system, when you stress the system out, when you miss a night of sleep or you have an infection or what have you, you literally short circuit that area of old brain damage. Another area where we can see fluctuations in day-to-day -day functioning in people with MS is regarding heat sensitivity. So when someone with MS goes out in the August sun and gets overheated, they may not just feel a little overly tired, but again, they can have old neurological symptoms come back out. And that's another example of fluctuations in functional reserve. If that same human being goes inside in the air conditioning and cools off, those nasty symptoms resolve. I now wanna turn our attention to thinking about functional reserve over decades. I've spent up to now talking about fluctuations day to day in functional reserve, but the functional reserve also plays a major role in what happens over time. The functional reserve's best correlate anatomically is brain volume or the size of your noggin. And all human beings their brains age over time. As we age, our brains get a little smaller each year, just like our skin gets a little thinner as we age. But in MS, it's accelerated, sometimes upwards of 10 times faster. The shrinkage of the brain occurs much more quickly. And keeping in mind that brain volume is the best correlate to functional reserve, it helps us understand why people with MS have an accelerated rate of functional reserve drop or loss. And when you look at MS over time, the functional reserve decreases. Our ability to rebound from an attack decreases. We don't bounce back as readily. And as the functional reserve diminishes over years and as the brain volume shrinks, areas of old neurological injury can come back out to plague us. This is really the underpinnings of progression, and it's a really important concept. It explains oftentimes why people are confused saying, hey, listen, doc, I haven't had an attack in many years. I don't have any new spots on my MRI, but I'm getting worse. I'm having more trouble walking. Why? That's because the areas of old damage from 20 years ago are wearing out as your functional reserve is dropping. Another way of thinking about it is imagine that I blew a hole in this wall, All right, So there's a big hole in the wall and I don't patch it. And now we fast forward time 30 years in the materials of this building that I'm in age, which wall falls first? Well, the one with the structural damage. Keeping that in mind, we can then turn our attention to this functional reserve concept in MS. Okay. We've talked about functional reserve, we've defined it, we've talked about how it can result in fluctuations of day-to-day -day functioning, and we've talked about how it can result in progression of disability. What can we do to slow the functional reserve? Well, I make this video at the tail end of 2021, literally tomorrow's 2022. And I say humbly that we don't have a magic bullet to give back functional reserve. We don't have a drug yet, which has been shown to do that but we do have several things that help. And a lot of them are behavioral. A lot of them are things that you have to do on your own. It's not a pill that I can give you. 
I want to bring to bear every single thing that we know about to slow the loss of the functional reserve and preserve the neurological reserve. So let's list a couple ways that we can do that. Number one, taking a disease modifying therapy has been shown to slow brain volume loss. It's been shown to maintain or preserve cognitive function. It's been shown to delay neurological disability. So one of the very best ways to maintain functional reserve is to take the most effective disease modifying therapy that you're comfortable with and make sure that it's working. Number two, getting adequate and quality sleep. If you're not budgeting for eight hours of sleep, and you're not getting good quality of sleep, you're waking up with a diminished function reserve. You're starting your day disadvantaged. Many people have horrible sleep hygiene, and many people impacted by MS have a myriad reasons why they have trouble sleeping soundly through the night. And if this is you, you can improve the quality of your life. You can improve your function reserve. You can improve your neurological functioning simply by improving your sleep. Now, I have a lot of videos on this channel about how to improve sleep function. So I'll throw a card up above and you can check that link out if you want and up your sleep game. Number three, diet plays a major role in my opinion in function reserve. And if you don't believe me, try this out. Take a stab at cutting out sugary foods, cut out excess sugar out of your diet. Try to minimize heavily processed foods and fatty foods, and fried foods, and soda pop, and fast food, and see what happens. What you will find, as many of my patients time and time again have experienced, is that you gain energy, you sleep better, you wake up more refreshed, you have more energy throughout the day, you have less cog fog, it's pretty amazing. And oftentimes people say, ah, I don't believe you, until they try it. So if you would like to up your game and improve your functional reserve, clean up your eating. Number four. Exercise slows brain volume loss. A trainer of mine a long time ago said exercise was like the fountain of youth. And I think in many ways he was right. You can preserve brain volume with exercise. You can preserve the reserve. And exercising as part of your lifestyle is a key component to living your best life despite having MS. Now, again, I have lots of videos on this channel about how to successfully exercise with MS. And so check them out. I'll throw a link right there. And it's a critical element to add to your game. If you would like to preserve the neurologic reserve, we must find a style of exercise that works for you and something that we can integrate into our lifestyle. That is a key element to preserving the neurologic reserve. Five, symptomatic medications can help with neurologic reserve. There's a medicine called 4-aminopyridine or Ampira. In Europe, it's called Fampira. And this is a pill that you take twice a day, which buttresses against heat sensitivity and motor fatigue. This video is getting a little long, so I'm not going to dive into a deep, detailed explanation of how Ampira works. But I have videos on my channel about that, and I'll make a new one in the near term. Suffice to say that for people impacted by MS who have heat sensitivity and motor fatigue, this pill can be rather magical and they can go out in the heat and not melt and they can walk longer without their legs getting weak. And so this is a symptomatic medicine that can be very, very helpful. Similarly, stimulant medicines, medicines like Adderall, Ritalin, ProVigil, and NuVigil trick the brain into being more awake. They literally help with energy levels and importantly, with cognitive performance, with cog fog. And so there's another set of symptomatic medicines that can help with day-to-day -day functioning and improving functional reserve. If you'd like to learn more about functional reserve and ways of upping your game in MS, click the video that's on your screen right now. Until my next video or live stream, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.